wow, this is amazing. It's cold, you know, kind of like an ice cream cone. In the last video, we talked about making cold with the Peltier cooler. We also talked about modifying the software so it would make the panel as cold as possible instead of switching back and forth between hot and cold. And we also introduced the possibility of needing a heat sink with these. So today, we're gonna cool the panel as much as we can. The criteria we're going to use to evaluate these three heat sinks are size, weight, and most of all, cooling capacity, and also sound level. So we want, ideally, a nice small cooling fan that can give us the performance that we need without using too much power or uh, being too loud. To make this work, I set up a 5 volt power supply with a switch on it and a set of male jumpers so I can connect to each of the various heat sinks with fans. I'm going to connect the thermoelectric cooling panel to each of the fans. I'm basically just going to use a simple rubber band for now. And then I'll connect it to my system and we'll see how cold it goes. So now all I have to do to test each heat sink is flip the switch on. We can measure the back side. And we're starting with an ambient temperature of about 71, 72 degrees. As soon as I flip the power supply on, we're going to see this go down. So we're seeing it shoot right down to 61. When you first turn them on, they tend to get very cool. But as the other side heats up, if there's not a strong enough heat sink on there, then they start to warm up. And eventually they reach an equilibrium. So let's see what the lowest we can get here is. For example, we are at 57. So there we're seeing it's starting to hit 62. Okay, it's been about two minutes and we're almost back to where we started. So I would say this particular heatsink is not very effective at all. We're already at 72 degrees. It's at 73 degrees. I just don't even think it's worth it when I have two larger ones. Next heatsink up is this one. It's the Argon 40 fan. Now, I like this one because the blades are bigger on the other one, and it's got a whole lot more um, heat mass there. That's sort of uh, gold-colored stuff. The only problem is the contact surface is not great. That's just about as big as my fingernail. But, you know, we want to cover up something that's probably three or four times that wide in every direction. So, you know, this one's kind of a crapshoot, but uh, let's give it a whirl. Okay, there it is, all rigged up and ready for testing. Now there's, there's a caveat. This one would really benefit from using the thermal paste since the contact area is so small. So immediately we're seeing a jump down, 62 degrees. Yeah, we're reaching 57, but it looks to be slowing around there. Yeah, now it's starting to come back up. So this heat sink and fan combo hit just about the same bottom as the other one when we first turned it on. I wonder if that's going to be a clue about its general performance. Here we see it's already up to 62 through the 60s and it looks like it's starting to reach 70. And now we've crossed over to uh, hotter than the room, 73. So this one really can't cool the Peltier cooler enough, I would say. Although it probably would be better with thermal paste. All right, let's try the next one. It's time to try the Greek Pie Raspberry 4 heat sink with cooler. There are a few reasons why I like this one and have high hopes for it. First of all, it has a much larger surface area overall. Uh, second of all, the fan blade has more area. The diameter is about the same as the previous one, but I believe just having more surface there is an advantage. Plus, it has a big enough surface there that it can make excellent contact with the heat sink. Almost the entire surface can touch. Uh, it also looks a little easier to mount because it's got these uh, screw thingies on there. Let's measure the performance of this heat sink. It's starting off at a nice 70 degrees, so we're at room temperature. Turn on the power supply. Now, as I said, usually when I first turn them on, it gets nice and cold. 56. Other ones got down to 57. 
This one seems to be going lower, which is a great sign. So that made it all the way down to 53. Okay, I've been running it for about four minutes, and the hottest it ever gets is about 61 and change. This is actually good news, because the other two heat sinks couldn't even get below room temperature, but this one is holding the temperature down uh, from about 72 to about 61, maybe 62, depending on how you round. Now this is a pretty good result, but I will say that my intended application is to get a little bit cooler. How much better this, cool, this heat sink can work when we have thermal paste on it, or do I order a uh, more intense heat sink? Here's the thing, it's not only gonna have to cool off a heat sink itself, but it's gonna have to cool a thermal mass. I spent a little while here trying different voltages and duty cycles on the Peltier cooler, and um, I couldn't get any of them to go any cooler. Okay, there's one last thing I wanted to try while I have the nice experimental setup. I wanted to apply some of this thermal paste and see how much of a difference it makes. Okay, that's sticking pretty well in place there by itself. Let's repeat the experiment with the thermal grease in place. Initial ambient temperature is 70.8. Turn on the power supply and see what the temperature goes. As usual, we see a quick decline right when you begin the cooling process. I think previously we hit about 55 or so. This initial low was about 48 so potentially the cool the uh, thermal paste is helping a lot okay, I'm gonna let that run for a minute and report back that's been running for about three minutes so let's check in on the temperature Wow this is amazing it's down to 40. 3, 44, but 43 degrees, and it's holding there. This is very impressive. So we've gone from about 70 to about 43, taking 27 degrees off the top. So this really shows the, uh, the benefit of the heat sink, because previously I think it was only getting down to about 57 or so. So we were able to knock another 15 degrees off of that. And now I want to touch something that's actually 43 degrees. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's, it's cold, you know, kind of like an ice cream cone or something. And then, yeah, in, in Celsius land, that's about seven degrees. This is pretty awesome. I think this is good enough to work. Thank you for sharing this secret project moment.